Well, Take Two is good in progress here, or well in progress at the moment. Uh, today we're going to look at the um, O2 sensors on this uh, engine. The Jaguar engine here behind me is the V8, 4.4 uh, liter. It runs absolutely superb whenever it runs, but it's very, very sensitive to a lot of things. And one of the things it's sensitive for is the oxygen sensor. So to get this thing run smoothly without any lights and so forth, this is what you have to do. I normally change all four of mine uh, at the same time whenever that comes up and I just did that like a year ago but apparently I have one of the sensors that's already gone bad on me and therefore I'm gonna go ahead and change that the one I got is the oxygen sensor number one upstream on bank two um, and it's sensor one of that one of course as well so that's the fuel air mixture that it's going to, uh, to carry it's the one before the catalytic converter and therefore it's a little bit more challenging to get to and that's how I'm going to take through this right now. Now if you do change the oxygen sensors on the Land Rover it's, it's kind of really important to make sure you get the right oxygen sensors. Don't take any cheap models on there. They don't correct, well they don't respond correctly and uh, they might respond too slowly as well meaning that you are not getting the amount of feedback to your uh, computer to make sure you get the right fuel to air mixture. So having a, let's say a non-moving or non-operating oxygen sensor or one that doesn't communicate with the computer is going to give you any light and also if you have one that gives a slow response it's going to give you the same kind of indication. You might even get a combination of two and then you will get the PO codes uh, PO and then 151 three and four and they all have to be reset whenever you get to that part so yes it does take a little bit of uh, effort to get these things taken care of make sure you don't break the wires and so forth and uh, stick to the little bit more expensive ones i'll go with the denso which is the one that's uh, that the air that the engine here behind me was actually uh, developed with you could probably use a boss as well but uh, i'll go with the originals in this case they're a little bit more expensive but it'll also save you a little bit of he heartache and headaches as well on the long run so uh, stay tuned and we'll get this thing fixed right away just loading the uh, obd scanner so we can see what kind of codes uh, that might be going on and uh, just to make sure it's the same we're talking about there we go let's have a look what it says codes here we go we'll take the stored ones there we are p154 and it cost 10 bucks for O2 sensor no activity detected bank to sensor one so in this case it's kind of obvious it's not working anymore um so that's good there's another one as well let's go ahead and have a look to that one as well it says the o2 sensor circuit slow response bank two sensor one that makes sense so in this case I'm going to go ahead and take that and I'll show you where it is. Um, the top panel on the engine will tell you the um, different cylinders, where it starts. I'll also include a little bit of a diagram here so you can see exactly where you'll find bank 1 and bank 2. To figure out what size bank 1, bank 2, you can actually utilize the diagram on top here as well. I'll go ahead and then put into a picture as well so you can see that as well right now. Um, basically it's the front cylinder that's going to be cylinder number one and that's also the bank one side so I got bank two over here so my oxygen sensor uh, number two which is running a little bit just say intermittently is the bank two sensor number one so it's on the left side of the car right side as I'm looking at it right now uh, and then I'll have to dump down right there on that side and uh, that's where I'm going to take it away tools we're going to use today is uh, basically a special little tool to take out the sensors it's got an opening in the side right here that slot that you see right there is actually for the wire to go in and it fits straight down so you can take it off and then of course you can use your uh, ratchets as well I have an electric one and then maybe a few extensions as well before you're ready for it so that's basically the main tools you're gonna need it's always easier to work on a cold engine than the hot one because you are working on the hot section so let it cool off for a while otherwise you can burn your hands so bank two sensor number one on this uh, Land Rover is actually located all the way down here in the back. So it's advisable to take your watch and all that stuff off rings and whatever. But basically this is the wiring you see goes into the exhaust pipe right there. 
might be hard for you guys to see but that wiring right there that's the sensor we're talking about and that's the one that needs to come out it is probably a little bit more accessible coming from the um from the top than it is from the bottom and i think you'll be better off taking it from the top that's what i've been uh, lucky with a few times so uh, that's what we're going to attempt to do today as well so here is the uh, o2 sensor it just came out and uh, as you can see it does not in any particular way look like it's uh, dirty worn out or anything whatever uh, the wires in the end look quite nice as well sometimes they can actually be cut over or if it's actually forced in to the wrinkles it could also be cut like that uh, but all in all this just looks like it's one of the new ones as well that I put in already a year ago pull product get to the uh, and I'm not sure if it's an actelic one this one this case here I can't really see it on there I don't think it is so just stick to the real ones otherwise you can change them every year and it's very very sensitive on the engine with this so um, I'm gonna go back and take the uh, Denso I'm gonna put that one in and we'll take that out of the package now and then we'll see how that looks like So here's the new one taken out of the box basically and uh, you got some uh, copper grease here as well you got it all protected here as well it's very important you don't drop it it's really important that you take care of this kind of little probe because the probe is very sensitive it's um, normally a PTC or it's a resistor that actually changes uh, resistance with the temperatures in there and uh, therefore make sure you actually keep a little bit of protection on this until the last minute. You put a little bit of the um, copper fit on there, or the copper grease, put that on so you can get it off again and uh, then you hand tighten it into the to the place where it's going to sit and then in the end that's when you tighten it up with the wrench, not before that. So uh, after that I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, before, well, before I put it into the car, I'm going to uh, make sure there's some contactor cleaner on the uh, plug itself just make sure it can withstand the water as well because I'm driving a lot of off-road with this one so it is actually demanding quite a bit of uh, uh, tightness also for the water otherwise I might have problems later on because the plugs inside might corrode as well so uh, once that's all done then we're basically done with stuff the good thing about sticking to the original probe as well when you take this off without touching the probe you can see it's already if you look at it there, it's already proper, gre proper greased in and ready to go ahead and fit straight into the wrinkle. So you don't even have to use your uh, copper grease uh, that's also here in the box. You can just tighten, hand tighten it and then after that tighten it up. It's actually really, really nice. So uh, let's try it. So here we are going in to show you the uh, place where the oxygen sensor is actually seated. It uh, can be hard to see, but if you see the exhaust, there should be a hole on it down there and that's where the sensor goes in now to put it back in always put it in by hand and then you only tighten by wrench so nothing with wrenches all the way through make sure you don't cross screw it into the uh, wrinkles and also make sure that the wires is not going to be deteriorating as you come in there as well so make sure you get that sorted what I do as well in this case I actually make sure that the uh, connectors are going to be fine as well so the connectors they have to be completely clean put some uh, I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of um, contact cleaners in there as well before I assemble it so that's gonna be what I'm doing now so here we go let's put that in that's it once you have it in there and you put the two connectors in that's probably the hardest part use both your hands make sure it fits in and you can feel when it fits and it's ha it has to say click if it doesn't say click you might have some more problems coming up later so just make sure you assemble it correctly once this is done you can just go ahead and assemble the engine and uh, then we're done let's go ahead and check it out and see if it actually works the O2 sensor installation is now complete now we just have to go ahead and try to start it up and see what happens Removing any light, I'm just going to check the uh, OBD scanner here and uh, log into the system and uh, let's see how that works. I got the ignition on at the moment and that's all I got and then uh, let's go ahead and see if we can communicate with the computer. 
and let's read the codes for a second. And here we go. Let's go for diagnostics and raise the other ones. Go for that one. It says there's two codes in there. Let's read them for a second. It was as I expected actually. It's the PO154 O2 sensor circuit no activity detected. Bank 2 sensor 1. That's the one we just have um, basically uh, changed. So that should be alright. Let's go back and let's go for the next one. Let's see here. That's the only one. Okay, great. Then uh, in that case, we'll go back and we'll just clear all the codes. Let's erase that one. There we go. Erase is now done. And there we go. Let's go and have a look now and uh, start it up one more time, see what happens. Any light is now out. Everything's working perfect. Idle is steady. No funny um, stuttering from the different centers or whatever. It seems like everything's working just perfect. So uh, we'll leave it like that. It's now working quite nicely. Let's see if it actually does uh, give us some kind of information. So we can go onto the live data here just to see if the auction sensor number two is actually giving us some kind of reading. This one here, let's go ahead and see what he's showing. A nice sign is coming up. So it is sending, definitely sending a quick signal too. Uh, a lot more fast responding than the other one I had. So that's really good. Let's see if I hit the uh, gas pedal here a little bit. Yep, it reacts immediately. So that really worked well. Let's go back and check the other one. Just to have a comparison basically. So we'll go up to uh, the sensor one up here on the bank one side. Let's see if that does. It does a little bit the same. Working nicely with the sinus, not a complete sinus, but it's giving you um, a reading. And if I hit the gas pedal, you can see immediately response. So I'm expecting this is going to work pretty nicely. Um, I don't see any other reason to try anything else. So I think that cured the problem. And um, hopefully that's the end of it. So that concludes the um, change of an oxygen sensor on Land Rover Velar 3 2005, the uh, V8, the 4.4 liter. Uh, you might want to go ahead and check them out. I normally take all four, as I said, but the other three has already been taken. I just had one here that was bad, and I think it's because of uh, a non Denso brand. Uh, put the Densos in, or at least a Bosch. Don't go over anything that's cheap in that because it's not going to work. You're going to have to change them constantly, and you're not going to be happy with it. So um, try it out. I hope you enjoyed it. As you can see, it's not that difficult to change them. Make sure you get the right ones because I have, I've had boxes that came to me with a different probe in there. If you only got the two openings up here in the front, then you're on the sensor one. The sensor two, the downstream one, also known as that one, has a lot more holes in it and um, is not going to work. Don't mix them up because that's going to be a different problem as well. It won't run with it and you're going to have trouble right from the beginning. Another way you can see it is in the plug itself which is here uh, it won't fit on the sensor 2 location so make sure you buy one where the plugs are actually already installed once you put them in it's going to be a lot easier and you're going to avoid a lot of problems and uh, headaches as you go along when you take them out of the box make sure you protect the end of it remember this one here is the old one so i'm going to throw that out right away but do not get any silicon assets or anything on there just protect this one and keep it as sterile as you can as you put it in that'll be the best remove the plastic cover at the last minute and then you hand tighten this and put it into the uh, to the exhaust itself and then once it's hand tightened at that moment you can go ahead and tighten it with the uh, the wrench and also the the socket that goes in there so if you do that you should be quite fine go in and clear the codes once you clear the codes at that moment well you're ready to go ahead and go for a test drive and it's going to be one really really nice so um, I hope that clarified a few things and maybe we can help you out with um, changing these things as well and uh, you should be able to do it yourself. Just remember, work on a cold engine. That is the best. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like and subscribe button and I'll come back with another video as soon as I can or whenever things comes up. So um, I'll see you very soon. Thank you.